Tatnam, beautiful sovereign sisters, and welcome to this week's astrological and ancestral tarot guidance for the sovereign sisterhood movement, a global movement for generational healing and the disruption of all generational patterns of trauma. So this week, we are diving into a very transformational week filled with a lot of breakthroughs. In our astrology segment, we're going to explore how the sun's move into Scorpio season is going to push us all towards very deep subconscious mind reflection. We're going to discuss also the challenging sun Pluto square that's stirring up a lot of power dynamics this week and a need for change in a very urgent way, not only personally, but also in society. We're also going to look at the innovative Mars Uranus connection that's opening doors to a lot of unconventional solutions. Then we'll tune into our ancestral tarot wisdom for the week, which is all about navigating these energies with sovereignty and about embracing a new cycle where there's a lot of inner fire, power, success, abundance, and expansion of your mental mental realm. So let's dive deep and discover together how to prepare for success and reclaim our sovereignty. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's start with the astrology for the week. And let me tell you that. First and foremost, we are living in epic times, right? Everything in this world is completely changing. Our souls decided to make their entrance into this incarnation during such highly transformative, once in a lifetime, once in a generation type of energy. And and I'm all in for it, you know, as tough as change and um really the need for us to evolve can be for those humans that get stuck in old ways of being and really are afraid of making any changes in their lives. It really is an opportunity for transformation, for growth, and for entering into what our ancestors also spoke about, this this golden age of consciousness, this age of Aquarius that is happening beneath our eyes, beneath our awareness whether we like it or not and whether we're aware of it or not and this week is really no different because there's opportunities for a lot of personal and collective growth there's challenging aspects that are pushing us to confront these very necessary changes because either you evolve or you die literally or you become extinct but there's also some harmonious aspects this week that provide innovative ways to implement these changes, especially after this very fiery full moon in Aries that we just came through last week. If you missed last week's astrological update, it's probably a good idea for you to go check it out here on my YouTube channel so that you can put the puzzle pieces together. Because what I'm talking about today is just a continuation of the momentum that is picking, is continue to be, continue to grow as we get closer and closer, especially to Pluto going fully into Aquarius on November 18th, right after the election. So watch that episode so that what I'm talking about today, you can better tell a story for yourself. Yes, we're going to look at the global collective energy, but astrology is such an impactful self-realization tool because when you know yourself, you have a sense of peace, of sovereignty, of trust and surrender where you can actually live in the present moment and and use these insights this wisdom to navigate what could feel like a tumultuous time to be alive so we'll start first with what's happening with the change of the seasons and change of the astrological signs more more clearly seasons would be more equinox and solstice and things of that nature but it feels like that to me when we leave For example, this week, we're leaving the energy of Libra and saying goodbye to all of our Libra babies. And on the 22nd, now we're entering into Scorpio season. That's why I like to call them seasons. These cycles are very impactful because Scorpio is a water sign and it's ruled by Mars and Pluto. It, it represented by lots of intensity, passion. I have, I'm not a Scorpio. I, I was, I'm a Capricorn. Uh, however, I have a lot of Scorpio in my birth chart. In fact, some of my major superpowers that were given to me, gifts, re, uh, revolve around Scorpio energy, the 12th house, because the 12th house connected to Pluto, subconscious mind, Mars, fiery energy. It's Scorpio energy makes, this makes Scorpio energy very like 
very deeply investigative, right? Deals with all of these hidden truths in the subconscious mind, taboos, subjects of taboo, like sexuality or things that you don't know, no, not uh, normally speak with your friends with, right? Think about the time we're entering into where Halloween, Dia de los Muertos, it's not a coincidence that it's honored during these times, it's there's a reason for that and the reason that is is because a lot of people say that the veil is thinner between the physical and the spiritual realm as it relates to Scorpio season for me the veil is always thin there is no veil when you practice spiritual psychotherapy of a course in miracles like I have for such a long since 2008 and teaching it in in my group coaching program and my community satori you realize that there was never a veil to begin with and it's not something that makes you crazy it gives you power it liberates you from any fears that a lot of the time Scorpio season brings because people don't like to talk about people dying or these things that are taboo or 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 the spirit realm in general because it just brings a lot of fear. But that's why also around the Scorpio season, more people are gravitating towards these themes of death and rebirth and and just anything that is not explainable through the science but i have to remind you that science is the demystification of the spiritual it's just scientists are a lot of them are just people that are jaded and don't believe in god and they're trying to prove god scientifically or even try to prove that there isn't god i saw a crazy movie over the weekend um, called i origins i highly i origin i highly suggest that you watch that movie especially during scorpio season because it's about reincarnation and and what um, I realize is in this movie, you know, the scientist, I don't want to generalize at all scientists, but this scientist, I mean, that's why he became a scientist to try to prove that there is no God. And then God <laughs> over delivered and showed him exactly that not only is there a God, but that God has been guiding his life. And so Scorpio season kind of makes us move into a shift of focus. So we leave this external balance, Libra season to internal exploration transformation metamorphosis the scorpio season intensifies our emotions it encourages us to go deeply into the psychological aspects of who we are this introspection and as the sun then moves into scorpio on the 22nd you're going to start to feel this this desire to dive deep into your psyche this isn't a time for like surface level interactions or quick fixes. It's a period for confronting our shadow, that aspect of ourselves that we don't like to show to others that we're embarrassed or ashamed about. Examining our deepest motivations through meditation, through journaling, and also being very, very honest about our emotional landscapes. Scorpio energy is intense, very transformative, and it urges us to shed old skins and emerge renewed. For me, Scorpio season was always the, the toughest. And October is when I used to, before I was not self-aware, before I was doing this inner work of Kundalini Yoga meditation, Course in Miracles psychotherapy. And when I finally allowed my inner spiritual laws itself to to really study astrology daily i've been i've been studying astrology since 2008 but like daily 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 probably since like 2018 where i dove deeper into my own birth chart and understanding it and the reason why scorpio season was always so challenging for me was because scorpio season like i told you I, even though i'm not a scorpio i have the 12th or i have a lot of energy around the 12th house around scorpio where actually it's one of my superpowers one of my gifts and that's the whole thing about scorpio season and what's happening in the world right now that so many of us have had psychic powers intuition powers uh, metaphysical powers like being able to to uh, to know when someone's going to transition and we're so afraid of, we've been so afraid of them because we don't want to be called crazy. We don't want to be called weird. And Scorpio season is about owning those powers. It's about embodying them and not being afraid because in the age of Aquarius, which we're stepping into here already, November 18th, Pluto goes fully into Aquarius. Those are going to be the, the leaders of this new earth. It's those that are intuitive, that are connected to the divine feminine energy. They already are leading. Because we can create anything from our imaginations, from our thoughts, feelings. You're going to be able to see that even more clearly with the technology that's going to be used now. 
because of all this information, I would have to do a whole other podcast episode on this. I, I went deeply into it, into our community this morning. So those of us that have always hit our powers are, are we all have them, by the way. It's, it's just that most of us are very stuck in programming society or generational trauma patterns that keep us away from these. And we carry witches wounds. Our grandmothers were burned at the stake for being intuitive, for being healers. But during Scorpio season, it's like you confront why you're afraid of these things, which makes us feel very, very uncomfortable. And me being the Scorpio being in my 12th house or Scorpio being very prominent in my birth chart as 12th health power and destiny and, and gifts that's why I always struggled in in October, and now that all makes sense. So we're going to into this major inner world journey now as we step into Scorpio season this week. So happy birthday to all my Scorpios out there. I love you. I see you. My brother is a Scorpio, so I understand you. And I also understand you because of all the ways Scorpio vibrates in my own life. Now, on top of that, that's a big shift where we feel that energetically. It's like something has changed. That's what's going to be happening on the 22nd. But also on the 22nd, I want to point out that the sun is in Libra, squaring Pluto in Capricorn. And the reason why I want to bring this up is because whenever we have squares, there is tension. There's tension between the planets. And then we look at what these planets archetypes symbolize, right? There's a desire for, for bringing equanimity and healing. And the whole thing about this square on the 22nd, as we move into Scorpio season, is that there's tension between Libra's desire for harmony and Pluto and Capricorn. The last few days, Pluto and Capricorn then moving into Aquarius also the United States of America going through its Pluto return. We're going to talk about this in a moment. It's pushing for deep structural change. So it could manifest, especially around the 22nd and this week, as maybe you're going through power struggles in relationships or there's challenges that are now being um, posed or, or presented to these established systems. So this introspective journey of Scorpio season is further than intensified by the sun in Libra square to Pluto and Capricorn this week because it creates tension between our desire for harmony, Libra, and the necessity for profound structural change, Pluto and Capricorn for the last 16 years, since 2008. So this week, you, you might find yourself just grappling with power dynamics in our own personal relationships. And in a larger societal structure, this could manifest as global upheaval, right? Uh, more revelation around government abuse or people in power who have abused their power. And this also can manifest as internal conflicts between wanting to keep the peace and recognizing the need for radical change externally as challenges to established systems and to authorities. And the reason why that's happening and it's very prominent is because of what's happening in the world. We are getting ready. Pluto is in the last degrees of Capricorn for the last few days before it leaves Capricorn and it doesn't return to Capricorn for 248 years. So all my Capricorn babies, really it's all the earth signs, Capricorn cancer, because we have been majorly affected the last 16 years through this metamorphosis. This has been a period of profound transformation and rebirth especially you have a strong Capricorn cancer Pluto um, placements on your chart. And the thing is, is that it before it leaves to Aquarius, it's going to bring up the last few things that we need to see as it relates to abuse of power. And right before the USA election, the United States of America is going through its own Pluto return. I've talked a lot about this in the astrological updates. But for you to understand, if you're new to my to my updates, basically, this happens every 248 years. 248 years ago, the United States of America was birthed. The Declaration of Independence was created. The Pluto return happens only to entities like companies or, or governments because we don't live to be 248 years yet. So we don't experience a Pluto return. But for example, when it happened to the Roman Empire, it actually collapsed the entire empire. Because Pluto in Capricorn, and when the country goes through its Pluto return, 
there's a profound period of transformation of rebirth for the entity represented by the chart. In this case, it's the United States of America. And what that does is that as we move into Pluto and Aquarius, this is about the people, community, humanitarian technology. What does that mean? That anything that is of abuse of power, Capricorn, Pluto, that has been, why are we seeing all this government um, abuse of power in so many different ways, social media, weather, um, even the vaccine and, and COVID, all of those things, were all of this uh, exposure of abuse of power in the Epstein cases, the Weinstein the Diddy cases, all of those things are a representation of what Pluto uncovered while I was in Capricorn. But that also happened in your personal life. Where were you abusing your power? Or where was there abuse of power in your relationships? Because those structures are no longer going to withstand this new era of Pluto and Aquarius. Because Pluto and Aquarius, an air sign, traditionally ruled by Saturn, but now ruled by or in a modern astrology ruled by Uranus, is all about innovation, community, humanitarian ideals, very progressive technology, intellectual. So anything that does not fit into this narrative of community, of humanitarianism, is going to be uh, basically exposed into the light. Uranus is a <laughs> shocking, and it's ruled the modern ruler of Aquarius, so that it could fall apart. So we're just starting to see... The beginning of the end we're going to see right now until november 18th way more things being disclosed way more shocking things being revealed not just because it's an election year but because this is what pluto and capricorn is doing and then as we move into aquarius whoever or whatever is not vibrating or not operating under this new energy of aquarius community not dictatorship no abuse of power in the government power to the people it's going to be, it's going to fall apart completely. So you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is look at within yourself, where have I abused power? Have I learned the lessons? Have I brought it to the light, the shadow, Scorpio? Have I accepted that I've been unconscious in the past? Have I done the work of forgiveness for myself and for others? Because if you haven't, you're going to struggle a lot as Pluto goes into Aquarius because karma is due. And karma is not punishment. It Karma means whatever you are planting as seeds, that's what you harvest. God doesn't punish you. We punish ourselves because we feel guilty about not acting in the Christ consciousness, which is this new era that we're all stepping into. So lots of intensified energy right now. This transit right now of, of Pluto squaring the sun with Mars involved, it can make create a lot of power struggles. It can create um, a lot of uh, tension and it can also bring things to the light that perhaps we're not necessarily happy to see. So remember, square aspects are these 90 degree angles between the planets. And because that indicates tension and challenges, that does not mean bad. That's pushing you for growth and change. I don't like to use bad or good. For me, the most what would someone would else would consider something very bad is the something that would expand me the most. That's why we need healing at the level of the mind and meditation to do that. So after that, we have one other thing that's going to help us during the week. It's not all good and bad. There's some positive opportunities for growth. Mars in Cancer in Cancer sextile Uranus in Taurus is happening on the 24th. And the reason why I want to bring this up is because sextile aspects are different than squares so sextile aspects are a 60 degree angle between the planets and, that, and this indicates harmonious uh energy and opportunities that ease of and an ease of expression between the energies that are all involved so i love this for us because even though we're entering to the depths of scorpio season subconscious in mind and there's a square with pluto and the sun in libra guess what there's also this harmonious energy that's allowing us through Mars and Cancer or sextiling, Cancer, sextiling, Uranus and Taurus to help us really bring this change forward. It's almost like it's this, this opportunity where this energy is of, um, like feeding this nurturing growth energy through very unconventional means, meaning there could be solutions that are coming your way from this tension that you're feeling that you didn't even know expect. 
So with this harmonious aspect, Mars, you have to remember, Mars is the planet of action, assertiveness, of desire, of passion. It represents our drive, how we pursue our goals. We're being pressured to change. So Mars, I feel like, is really helping us, along with Cancer, a water sign ruled by the moon, representing emotions, nurturing home, family. It's a cardinal sign, excuse me. Cancer energy is very intuitive, very protective, and it's deeply connected to roots and heritage. So it wants to heal at the root cause, at the at the emotional cause, at the generational pattern cause, not just on a put a band-aid. And then Uranus, the planet of innovation, rebellion, sudden change, is giving us this opportunity to awaken. While Taurus, an earth sign, ruled by Venus, represents our values, our resources, material security, grounded, sensual, beautiful energy. So Mars and Cancer, Cancer, sextile Uranus and Taurus, I feel like that's just exactly the, what we need to deal with all this other energy of pressure to change. Because I feel like this is more like an opportunity to channel the intense transformative energy of Pluto and Capricorn and Pluto squaring the sun and, and Libra into innovative actions. It's almost like this emotional drive of Mars and Cancer is helping, an, helping us align well with this Uranus revolutionary energy in Taurus, suggesting that our deep feelings and intuitions can actually guide us towards unconventional solutions, particularly in areas related to home, family, your lineage, and material security. So overall, this week, what it's telling us is embrace the Scorpio energy by setting aside time for deep self-reflection meditation. If you need a meditation, you can uh, uh, pick one here on my YouTube channel, a Kundalini Yoga Meditation. Uh, it is the science of energy. It's going to help you really understand the signs. What is God trying to tell you? This could involve also not just meditation, but journaling or maybe taking long walks in nature where you're not going to be distracted, where you're going to be able to just really be with yourself. Stillness is going to help you tremendously. Chanting, pick one of the Kundalini Yoga meditations where you can chant. That's amazing because it allows the flow of energy to release its blockages so that you can become more aware. The other thing about this week is I, I think one of the things we need to be really be doing is be aware of the power dynamics in our relationships and be willing to address these imbalances, even if it temporarily disrupts harmony. We're being supported by Mars and Cancer, but the tension is going to be there. So pay attention to your emotional impulses, especially regarding home and family matters this week, because this could lead to innovative solutions or changes. Consider how your personal transformations align with larger societal shifts. How can your individual growth contribute to the collective evolution? It's so important also this week to stay grounded. In between all this potentially intense emotions, practices like meditation. Physical exercise is going to help you too, but it doesn't touch on the 10 energetic bodies like meditation does. Physical exercise is going to help your physical body and maybe release some cortisol and adrenaline or and things of that nature. But it's not going to deal with the other ten, um, nine bodies, your mind, neutral, positive, negative mind, your soul, your subtle bodies. That's why Kundalini Yoga is the perfect science of energy because it balances all ten energetic, 10 energetic bodies as well as the chakra centers, which are what process information. So meditation is going to be key. Flow is going to be key. Being in nature is going to help you tremendously. And overall, really be open to unconventional ideas, solutions, or approaches this week, particularly in areas that feel stuck or resistant to change. Remember, the leader of the new earth that we are co-creating, all of us with every inhale and with every exhale, is one that is intuitive, one that can see beyond what the physical eyes are showing her. So this week, it's going to call us to do deep, sometimes very uncomfortable work of personal transformation with the understanding that this internal shift can absolutely lead to innovative changes in our external world. Your inner world is creating your external world. 
So this is a time for breaking these generational patterns at the root level, both personally and collectively. We're seeing that. And for aligning our actions with our deepest truths and evolving values. Remember, astrology is a beautiful, perfect science, but it's not a prophecy. You have the final word. What we do with astrology is almost like a weather report. We know it's going to rain. We're going to bring the umbrella. We know it's going to snow. We're going to bring the the um, jacket to keep us, ourselves warm. So let this marinate and see where it fits in your life and learn to trust by doing what the astros are telling us to do this week. Take action, aligned, inspired action from a place of knowing who you are, not from a place of volatility or a place of resistance to change because that's what's going to get you in trouble. So now that we've navigated all of these incredible astrological currents, let's now turn our attention to the ancestors and our ancestral guidance for the week. The tarot cards this week are loud. <laughs> our ancestors are loud, but it, they also beautifully complement our astrological insights. That's why I absolutely love astrology and tarot together. Oh my God. It's like the, the sense of inner peace that I get from knowing, from confirmation, because these to me are like confirmations from God, is what I would call sovereignty. So as we bridge the wisdom of the stars with the guidance of our ancestors, let's now discover how to harness this week's energy for our highest good, not just for our highest good, but for the highest good of all. Now, if you're resonating with this message, if you are somebody who is deeply in into astrology and, and ancestral tarot and ancestral healing, don't forget to hit that like button, share with other beautiful sovereign sisters in your life and subscribe so that you can be notified for these weekly updates. So let's get it right into it. So the first card that we received, I pulled three cards, immediate past, present, and future. And that is what tells us the perfect story for the week. So the first card that we received is the Queen of Wands. All cards are upright this week, which is very beautiful and interesting. Even when they're not upright, like last week, it was like all over the place. But it was a message that we needed in order to really move forward. This week, Queen of Wands, upright. She is associated with, this, with the fire science, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. And in numerology, she represents the number four, which is the number of stability, a foundation. To me, number angel number four is always protection. There's protection, an angelic protection, protection, ancestral protection. So in the immediate past, you've been bold in your undertakings and actions. You basically have been coming, you're now coming from a period where you've been learning how not to be afraid to of your own real power and put out your gifts into the world. And I know that the collective consciousness that I speak to in my community, especially and in this community, this is exactly what's happening. It's like a dark night of the soul that through this Aries full moon from last week, we were like, but this is who I am. And not only is this who I am, but now I'm revealing it and showing it to the world. So you, you're coming from the past with this determination to, to pursue your creative visions. There's highly self-actualized and self-aware energy that is channeling your strengths and your weaknesses also effectively. You're aware of the shadows. You're aware of the light. You're, you're filled with optimism and full of ideas. And you're incredibly radiating this health, this vitality, this inner vibrancy. This ability to express yourself in the external world. Why? Because that's what happens when we own our power, when we stop being afraid of our gifts. And think about this in relation to the sun in Libra, square Pluto and Capricorn. To me, the queen of wands represents confidence, charisma, and determined action. And when you think about it, it aligns really beautifully with the sun in Libra's desire for harmony and balance. But it also resonates with Pluto and Capricorn's transformative power this week, where your ancestors are saying, hey, your recent past has been characterized by a strong, charismatic presence that has prepared you for the current transformative energies, which is the sun upright. Amazing. The sun, of course, associated with the sign of Leo, of our boldness, of our truth, of who we are 
represented by the number one, new beginnings and unity. This card is all about success, about radiance and abundance in your life. You now are full of energy. There's, there's a trust in your future because you're living in the now. Why? Because you stop being afraid of your power. This is, you are already enjoying the fruits of success. And if you have not harvested yet, guess what? This is a sign that it's coming to you in a major way. I'm talking about abundance in all aspects of your life because you're brimming with confidence, because you know your worth, you trust. There might still be challenges. I'm not saying there won't be because we live in a perfect universe with polarities that teach us and allow us to expand and grow. But you have the confidence and sovereignty and conviction to not add commotion to the emotion. And because of that, people are drawn to you. Because you have this ability to see the brighter side of things. You're sharing your highest qualities and achievements with others from a place of, of, of love, not from a place of arrogance. You're also facing difficulties with dignity. And you're realizing that things are actually getting so much better. This card particularly is connected to our solar plexus chakra. That's our power base. And why this is so strong is because we have stopped denying our power with the Queen of Wands energy. So because of that, you're bursting with enthusiasm. You're enjoying a wonderful sense of health. That's what the sun immediate present is all about. Think about um, this relation as it relates to the sun entering into Scorpio. We're entering Scorpio season, right? The card represents success, vitality, and clarity. And it complements the Scorpio season because as we shift from Libra's external balance to Scorpio's internal exploration, the ancestors are saying that you're in a period of illumination, of understanding. That's why I always said as much as Scorpio season scares people, it's so powerful because when you change the inner world, the outer world change, and that's what you've been doing. And because of that, now it's being reflected in your outer world. And now in the immediate future, the card that I pulled was the Ace of Swords. Now, the Ace of Swords is like this hand that's emerging from a cloud holding this sword to you. It's associated with the air signs like Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And it corresponds once again to the number one, representing new beginnings and potential. So what this is, is like this wave of energy from the intellectual realms. On the, you're like on the verge of a very significant breakthrough or a new way of thinking. There's a potential for sudden revelations, realizations, or understanding about a troubling issue. That is what happened to me exactly this last week. That's why I feel like I'm already living in this immediate present. This morning in um, Sadna, for my community, Satori Vitality and Spirituality, we went through a whole discussion on energy, Adi Shakti, the divine feminine energy of creation. We have been working on a 40-day uh, reclamation of the womb journey in the Sovereign Sisterhood Academy, my group coaching program for generational healing. And together, what has occurred is major up-leveling of the nervous system. See, all of the answers that we're seeking, they're always under our noses. They're here. But the problem is that we're not, our nervous systems are not ready to see them. So when we do a lot of this inner work, where you are doing shadow work, Kundalini yoga meditation, of course, miracle spiritual psychotherapy, that's shadow work. You're not afraid of your power. You own it. Success comes to you. And then your mind becomes very expansive. And that's what this card is all about. You're thriving on new ideas, inspiration, original thinking and vision that's coming from your heart. You're taking action on these new ideas and you're maintaining a level of success. Why? Because you worked on your mindset. It's not just a band-aid. There's a mindset shift that you've been, that you've had. This card is all about uh, championing a cause. So maybe you're, you're starting this project that's going to change society, that's going to change the world, that's going to change your life. This card is all about doing it because you're thriving on this new energy. You're thriving on your mind expanding in ways that you could never even imagine. Now, in the immediate future, think about it as this energy of Mars and Cancer, sextile Uranus and Taurus, what we just talked about in the astrology, because the Ace of Swords signifies these new ideas, this mental clarity, breakthrough thinking, 
And Mars Uranus sextile is about innovative inner energy. So the ancestors are, are literally foreseeing a period of inspired thought, of action in areas especially related to home, your legacy, your emotions, and your material security. So all together, when we look at it all together, the reading or where our ancestors are trying to tell us this week is that we've been on this powerful journey of personal growth and empowerment where we move from a place of owning our personal power to experiencing abundance. And now you're poised for achieving mental clarity and purpose. That's what the three cards mean. That you have done the inner work. That even though you've been given every excuse not to, that you've trusted God. And that you now your nervous system is at a whole different level where you're experiencing incredible expansion of your mind, which is creating a lot of expansion in your life. Because that's what happens. When you change your mind, you change your life. And that's what the inner work is all about. So moving forward, it's important for you to maintain that bold, confident energy that you've cultivated. Keep doing your inner work so you can have enough prana moving through your system. So that the stress from your growth doesn't get to you. And also allow your current sense of success and positivity to fuel your actions. Be proud of yourself. You deserve it. You've done it more than enough work. And you don't have to do any work to deserve it. You're worthy because you are the highest daughter of God. So you probably realize that. Continue to remember that. And use your confidence and optimism to power through the mental challenges and breakthroughs ahead. We talked a lot about that this morning in my community, Sadna, because we're always in between the inhale and the exhale. The first inhale we ever took, the last inhale we'll ever take. But in life, inhaling, exhaling, exhaling is what creates your life, your universes, the universe and more universes. But if you're not present in the inhale because your nervous system is pre-wired with a lot of cortisol and adrenaline from generational trauma, of course, you feel completely out of control. Of course, you feel scared. When you control your only thing you can control, which is your inhale in the present moment, you control your life. But in order to do that, you have to rewire your nervous system. You have to rewire your brain through this inner work of Kundalini Yoga meditation and, of course, miracle spiritual psychotherapy. Because right now, we're being told, use your confidence and optimism to power through, through any mental challenges. Trust in your ability to pursue truth and justice with your newfound clarity and continue to meditate and clear your mind to make the most of your intellectual potential. Now, tomorrow in the Sovereign Sister and Movement podcast, we have a brand new episode with my co-host Elvira Mariscal. Love her so much. And uh, we're talking about something really serious that causes us not to move into these power and abundance cycles which is abandonment wounds. And this abandonment pattern that happens, not just because parents physically leave, but because they check out spiritually and mentally because of the trauma that they've been through. So if you're struggling right now with life, if you're not sensing this abundance, if you're not sensing this vitality, then I welcome you to join us tomorrow for that podcast episode so that you can really understand how to release these wounds that are actually at the root cause of why you don't feel this way. Now, remember, as we conclude this week's update, ancestral guidance, as well as the astrological update, you all carry the power and strength of your lineage within you. That's key. So as you're taking this bold action and deep reflection, it's so important for us to remember that as you heal yourself, you contribute to the evolution of not only this entire sisterhood movement, but you heal seven generations before and after you. So this is a time for you to stand tall in your sovereignty, to embrace the wisdom of astrology of your ancestors, but more importantly, to embrace your own inner wisdom so that you can let your light shine brightly. So of course, if this knowledge has served you, please don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe, to join our movement so that you're notified every week when a new video is uploaded. 
And right now the Sovereign Sisterhood Academy is not open for enrollment. That is my group coaching program for generational healing. But you can always join us at the beginner's stages of the generational healing in my community known as Satori Vitality and Spirituality. Now there, that is a monthly membership that allows you to get, introduce yourself to these teachings of Kundalini Yoga Meditation and of course, Miracle Spiritual Psychotherapy so that you can increase your vitality so that you can get into the deeper healing work of the generational healing because you cannot go straight into generational healing if, healing if you haven't done any of this work. I mean, you can if you wanted to, but as a Kundalini Yoga therapist, I wouldn't do that to you. Why? Because you don't have enough vitality, chi, running through your system. If you're running in a lot of generational patterns of trauma, your emotions are eating up your energy levels, which means it is going to be almost impossible for you to go deeper into the healing journey. We got to raise your vitality levels first so that you can then prepare yourself to release these patterns energetically. So you can always start with this at Satori Vitality and Spirituality. I'll link the website link below. It's Veronica Barragan, I am, dot com forward slash Satori. And that is open for enrollment right now. So you can find out more by going to that website. So of course, thank you so much for being here this week. Thank you for liking, for subscribing and sharing. Until next time, may the stars guide you. May your ancestors walk beside you. And may you remember who you are. Blessed to, blessings to each and every one of you, Sovereign Sisters. Sadna.